two hands here. Hello, my name is Daniel, and thank you very much for coming today. I'm really honored to talk to you today. I heard that there is a plan for the district to open a division in Vietnam. That means we are going to be a separate division soon. What would be the key factors that ensure our success? And how is the district going to help us to have that key, to have that key factor? So I'm going to ask the, the, the three leaders of those professors here. Thank you, Daniel, for your question. Yes, to be a division, <coughs> we need more crowds. I think that is a major criteria. Um, but to be to have more crowd, maybe not enough. We need to have strong crowd as well. But of course, the opportunity is here in Vietnam for sure, because all the leaders see the progress in Vietnam. And we are very happy to have both area directors, area A3 Lan and A4 Rich, work so hard with a very good teamwork. And we believe it's possible to form a new division under the protocol of Toastmasters, of course, international. Thank you. I'll speak to that too. It's, a, it's an interesting question. I spoke about, uh, in, when I was speaking about getting other people involved, so one of the things we look for, we look for uh, as, as we grow divisions, we grow in the different parts of the world, is we look for depth of leadership. So uh, it's not just about numbers. And sometimes people will say, Jim, you know, the organization is just about numbers. It's not about numbers. It's developing leaders. So it's developing people in formal positions. But it's also developing a breadth of leadership. People who make small contributions. I spoke about that in my presentation at the club level. So to grow to a division, we need to identify some companies who could have clubs, some communities that could, could have clubs, some communities of interest who would put up clubs. By communities of interest, I mean, club that might be devoted to IT professionals or medical professionals. There's a club in Dallas, Texas that's <coughs> entirely comprised of single people, a community of interest. And if you're married in a club, you get kicked out. <laughs> but those are those are creative ways of thinking about how we reach communities of interest and bring our Toastmasters <coughs> environment to help them develop communication leadership skills. So I'll say, in any part of the world, to grow a division, to grow a district, we need depth of leadership. It's people making small contributions saying, look, here's an, an opportunity where we could start a club. And look, if we're going to start a club, then I'll go to the demo meeting. And if you're going to get a demo meeting going, then I'll volunteer to be a sponsor and keep working with that club so they become strong or I'll be a mentor. So it's finding people who might be in formal positions or in informal leadership positions. So, so that's sort of the leadership depth that we need to see to grow any aspect of the organization. Anybody else? Yes, I do agree with both international uh, director, a uh, president, <laughs> and also program coordinator director that Vietnam is the most progressive uh, area in uh, District 97 region, and it's possible right now, as you know, we have an active club, only seven clubs, and two prospect clubs, and more prospect clubs, which will be chartered soon and we have to follow with the Toastmaster protocol in the, in the council as well. So we we'll have to discuss in the whole group. As far as numbers are concerned, the requirement for becoming a district is uh, a minimum requirement is nine clubs. And we actually need to be able to grow to 12 clubs because the district uh, division is 12 to 16 clubs. Right now, as uh, Thawasak had mentioned, there are seven active clubs, and there are actually, there's now three in the pipeline that actually have their paperwork that are being processed. We have two others that are getting close to it, and we have three others that are actually actively looking, and I'm sorry, four. I just talked to somebody today. So now we have four clubs that are going to be We'll be meeting with them within the next uh, couple of weeks uh, where they want to form clubs also. 
So in total, we are going to, within the next six months, double the size of our membership here in Vietnam to at least 16 clubs. For that many clubs, we're going to need leaders. And that's where you come in. We have around the next six months 16 clubs. Yes. That means we are eligible to become a division, separate division. So we need a lot of leaders, as our president G has mentioned. It's just not about the number of clubs, but also how many leaders that we have developed and nurtured during the way that will be ready to be club officers. <laughs> and I see about a hundred here today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll just say, I, in case some people didn't hear, I see about a hundred here today. That's not very strong. There, I see about a hundred leaders here today. <laughs> okay, is there any other questions? Yes, please. My name is Morris. Uh, Morris. I have a question for Jim. Alright, Morris. 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 Uh, what is the single biggest, I won't say problem, issue that Toastmaster International uh, has at the moment, and what is Toastmaster International doing about that issue? Thank you, thank you, Morris. The issue remains awareness and knowledge. So I work in marketing and public relations. And, uh, let's play a little game here. So who's? I'm going to ask you five questions, ten questions. Actually, I'll ask you to raise your hand. Who has? Who is awareness of somebody called Muhammad Yunus? Who knows Muhammad Yunus? Three, four hands, four hands, five hands. Well, Who could tell me if I asked you? Just tell me why why he's well known. One. Okay, this is good. That's fine. Two. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to do that. So if somebody was going to be here on this stage next week and talk with Muhammad Yunus. Who would have interest in being here? One, two. Who would have Who would have a strong desire to be here? Zero. Who would clear the calendar to be here? I'll show, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Zero. So we saw about five people who had awareness of Muhammad Yunus, a couple who could tell me who Muhammad Yunus was, two who showed interest in being in this room if there was a speech, but not a strong desire or ability to act. To act. So that's the marketing, marketing and public relations model. You need awareness of your product, knowledge of your product, interest, desire, and action follow. So Muhammad Yunus is called the father of microfinance. Toastmasters gave him an award last year. So his story is he's in Bangladesh, he lives in Bangladesh, and one day he was walking down the street and there was a lady making baskets, and he started chatting with her and she said, I could do so much more for my family if I could get a loan. He said, well, why doesn't the bank give you a loan? Well, they just went, how much do you need? He said, I need $5. Banks don't loan anybody $5. So he loaned her $5, she bought more materials and did wonderful things for her family. So we extended that model uh, and developed a concept called microfinance. So now he's got lots of people who we loan small amounts from to. He's got uh, council set up, sort of like boards of directors, predominantly made up of women in communities who, who approve these small loans to small entrepreneurs, who coach and mentor people, and uh, they're making a big contribution in parts of the world. So microfinance has now grown quite rapidly. There's an organization called Kiva.org, K-I-B-A dot O-R-G. If you're interested, you could loan a small amount of money to somebody somewhere in the world and get it repaid. About 97% of those loans are repaid. It's a massively high rate. So that's a bit of a long introduction, but I, I take you through that because um, now I'll ask you, who's got awareness of Muhammad Yunus? I should see a lot more hands, right? Who's got knowledge? And I, I take you through that because if you're not aware of the product, you don't buy it. If you're aware but you don't have knowledge of what it does, you don't buy it. But after, if you've got awareness and knowledge and interest, desire, and action can, can take place. However, that remains our issue in Toastmasters. Too many people will say, I've heard of Toastmasters, or lots will say, I've never heard of Toastmasters. Some will say, I've heard of Toastmasters, but I don't know what you do. So public relations and marketing remains our largest issue. As a not-for-profit organization, um, we need to work with local chapters. So what we're working on is tools and capabilities, and actually we've got a board of director team right now looking at, look, what are what are some successful clubs doing, some really successful clubs doing, to, to drive awareness and knowledge of their uh, abilities so they can drive more people in. 
sometimes when I'm in, um, pr predominantly in the U.S., people will say, Jim, we need national advertising. Well, Toastmasters cannot afford national advertising in Vietnam, in Thailand, let alone in Canada, the United States. That's not the answer for us. So we need to find creative tools uh, and actually replicate what some people are doing around the world with social media, with uh, getting press engagement, by like driving awareness and knowledge so more people are particip participating. That's our biggest issue, awareness and knowledge. We need to drive more of it. I wrote that in the first column of the magazine that I wrote in September. It, that remains our issue. And personally, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage more people to share images of your club. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, show smiling faces. Because when people think of Toastmasters and public speaking, if they don't know about us, I don't think they picture smiling faces. People delivering speeches, that can't be fun, can it? Of course, we know it is, but I don't think that's perception. To do things, to send images uh, that will affect the perception of Toastmasters and get more people with your drugs. Thank you, Morris. Thank you very much, Toastmaster G. Um, is there any other questions? Yes, we have two here. Three of them. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, today is my great honor to uh, ask you some questions. Uh, only one question. <laughs> Yesterday, I was the uh, evaluator in the meeting of my club, and before taking that role, I read the menu book very carefully, and I, as I figured out, uh, the menu show show me that I should uh, talk a lot about the positive things, the encouragement and give the, the speaker uh, positive recommendations in my evaluation section instead of trying to show them uh, the negative things are not very good things in their speech. So I want to ask you about the importance of the uh, encouragement in the evaluation in Toastmaster and what is the culture of evaluation in U.S. Toastmaster club, especially in your club. Thank you so much. Answer them, don't turn it over to on. Um, so, what our culture in Toastmasters in general is supportive. So, some people talk about the sandwich technique, tell them things they did well, a couple of suggestions for improvement, and then re recap with what they did well. So, uh, it, it's about encouragement. And for me, it's never about right or wrong. You know, people don't do things wrong. It's, it's important that you offer your perception. How, how could it be better? What did not work for you as an individual? You know, I'm conscious in this room. We're making great eye contact with the folks up front. We're making terrible eye contact with the people in the back. <laughs> so it's, that's that's one aspect of public speaking, isn't it? It's trying to connect with everybody. Communication doesn't happen if, if I speak well, but the message doesn't land. So in your evaluation, it's important to give your impression, but it's never about right or wrong. Never, never about right or wrong. So do give them some uh, positive feedback on things that work well. Everybody does some things well, but give your opinion with how the speech could have been even stronger. My opinion, actually, I'm in the same his club. I mean, I say I'm Toastmaster as well. And I realized that uh, a question that Hong uh, raised up, that's also, that's also the concern of many Toastmaster members. Because um, I joined Toastmaster for uh, four years, but the thing that I think that I really really, really learned from the experienced evaluators that is when they show me what should I improve rather than that they're just talking about the good thing but are you doing well, you are doing awesome but it's just like the brain, the whitewash that it just tried to, to, to motivate me but actually that I realized the thing that I really learned about the evaluators, as in when they show me the ways, the examples, a specific example that in order to help me to improve more. I'll just pick up on that as well. So I, I would agree with that entirely. Like, always find one or two suggestions for improvement. Even if you think they're relatively minor, just give some perspective on how they could improve. That's not saying they did badly, that's not saying they did wrong, it's just giving a perspective on how they can improve. Being an evaluator is much like giving a speech. It's, it's difficult, for one, because it's an unprepared speech. And many times when you present the speech, you're trying to do something 
that you're probably not used to. In a speech where you, we're not used to standing up in front of the public. In an evaluation, we're not used to complimenting people. And that can be a difficult thing to find. So my suggestion would be to keep on focusing on what did that person do right? What is it that you felt that they, they exemplified that you want to announce to everybody else? Hey, look, this guy did this, and that was great. And that is what builds the confidence in the people who are doing the, who you're evaluating, and it also builds your ability to look at people in a different way. <laughs> Answer your question? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I got a question. Uh, the person at the back? We'll give chance for one person at the back. Yes. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to raise the questions. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Tessa, and I have been in Toastmasters for six years already. Wow. And I'm currently the, uh, the mentor for UEH Toastmasters, and I'm also the, the leader for of the Gavel, ISB Gavel, the first uh, Gavel club in Vietnam. And uh, my question is for the Gavel years. Um, they, I'm surprised that the manual that uh, the Gavaliers receive is just the same, the one that Toastmaster is using for competent communicator. And um, our Gavaliers, they are very enthusiastic, so they do it very fast. Like, <laughs> like now, we just in three months running the Gavel club, but uh, some of them like finished five projects already. So um, I would like to ask for your advice. When should a gavelier transfer to a Toastmaster? Because uh, if they transfer to the Toastmaster, they have to do it all over again. Or any change that they can continue, then drag from the gavelier to the Toastmaster. So that's my question. Thank you. Okay, let me first say, Sometimes people think you get elected international president and you know all the ins and outs, all the details of both Toastmasters. I don't. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm a little surprised that you need to start all over again. But uh, I would say somebody should transfer to a Toastmasters club when they want to pursue leadership opportunities, when they want to find other opportunities to get before other audiences. One of the beauties about our network of 50,000 clubs around the world is if you travel anywhere, in your country or in another country, you can visit another club and perhaps do a speech if you tell them in advance. And you'll get different perspectives. It's really important to develop as a communicator to get in front of different audiences. We develop just fine in our clubs, but it's, it's important to stretch your abilities before different audiences because we can do that in Toastmasters and outside of Toastmasters. So if somebody wants to see the full breadth of experience in Toastmasters, they should join the club. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. May, may, may I ask to Jim? Uh, we just do it. Just please transfer the mic to Vince Petra here. And then it's, the next one is you. Just want to add a little bit to Jim that and um, club first director Camisa. Let's talk about disadvantage of being a Gabo club. You cannot compete and become world champion of public speaking. <laughs> so as soon as possible, once you get over the age of 18, you should really become a Toastmaster. Just adding a little bit to that. Thank you. Finally, it's my turn to raise a question. Thank you, everyone, for giving this chance. So, first of all, I would like to say thank you to all the international officers uh, who spent your precious time here today. And um, my name is Chris, and one from one 
I'm from a Toastmaster Club in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and I have a very practical questions, and especially to the Mr. President today. That is, uh, I know that I used to serve in the uh, club officer position in my club, and I didn't get paid for that. And I may know, I know that our <coughs> officer in the division and district may not get paid too. But I don't know whether our Mr. President, you get any pay for your job and oh, for your position. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, this all point down to this point. I mean, like uh, people usually do something and they to get something in return. And if it's not the uh, mon monetary benefits, then what are the benefits you get in return as serving as the Mr. Uh, the President of the International Postmaster? And uh, I, I want to just make up very practical because uh, we all talk about the uh, experience as serving for the leadership program, leadership roles and community or better communicators. But they have you ever thought that you only get enough experience at postmaster if you need Yes, Chris, those are great questions. So first of all, what's my what's my salary from Toastmasters? <laughs> Big zero. What's the benefit I get? Billions. Billions. So, I'm, I'm so pleased you asked that, though, because, you know, consider many of you folks are early in your careers. So at some point, you're going to get to manage a team, lead a team. And um, that's awkward. It's, it's awkward to be... To, move from a peer to become a leader. You need to set objectives to give people performance feedback. You to acknowledge what they did well. To tell them areas they can develop and become stronger. Can, do you see where I'm going with this? Where you can practice those skills? You can practice those with everyday evaluations. But additionally, when you take on leadership roles, whether it's organizing this event today, whether it's service as a club officer, 